What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best possible settings to use to make your recordings crisp, clean, and super HD when recording with OBS. But before we get into that guys, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular, so if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. Okay, so the first step is going to be to open up your OBS and then down here in the bottom right hand corner, we're going to click on settings. Once we're in here, we are going to have all these tabs on the left side. We have general appearance, stream, output, audio, video, hotkeys, accessibility, and advanced. I'm going to try and make this as fast as possible for you guys and really just focus on the things that are going to affect your recording's quality. So under the general tab here, pretty much nothing in there that's going to affect your recording quality under appearance. This is just going to be the appearance of your OBS client itself. You can change the theme to make it bright, dark, whatever colors you want. Um, and then down here, this, this tab, the streaming tab, again, this is for streaming, not recording. So we're going to skip over this completely in this video. Down here in the output tab, this is where we're going to first start changing some settings that will affect the quality of your recordings. So under the output tab over here, make sure output mode is set to advanced. This will enable us to actually access some settings that are hidden if you have it on simple. Head over to the recording tab here, and this is where we're going to start tweaking things. Under the recording path, you're going to hit browse and select wherever you want your recordings to be stored. As for your recording format, you want to be recording in MKV if possible. What this will do is save you in case of a power outage or something happens and your recording gets corrupt and everything shuts down. Maybe you blue screened. This will save your recording, especially if you're doing longer recordings. You don't want to have to redo every single thing. The only reason I'm recording in MP4 is because my videos that I'm doing on this channel are fairly short. So if something were to happen, it's not that big of a deal. I can boot it right back up and start recording again. Under the video encoder, this is what you're going to want to choose. Um, you know, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you're going to want to use NVIDIA NVENC H.264 as your video encoder. If you're using AMD, you're going to want to use the AMD equivalent of that. Um, you can use X264, which will utilize your CPU's processing power as your encoder. However, I do not suggest you do this. I suggest using your graphics card or your GPU to do the encoding instead. So like I said, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, go with the NVIDIA encoder. If you're using an AMD GPU, go with the AMD encoder. For your audio encoder, FFmpeg AAC. Uh, audio track, you want to select it as one. Obviously, we're not rescaling anything here. Um, we're going to head down to the encoder settings. Um, and this is where you're going to change the actual settings. This is going to determine what your recording actually looks like. So for rate control, we're going to put this to CQP. The CQ level I'm using is 16. However, I want you guys to keep in mind that the lower you go, the bigger the file size is going to be. So for CQP level 16, um, you're looking at about a three to four gigabyte file size for a 10 to 12 minute long video. You can crank this up. Uh, even higher if you want to like 22. The difference between 22 and 16 is very, very minimal, um, but it's a drastic, drastic decrease in the size of your file. So if you don't have that much space, I suggest going, trying ranging anywhere from 18 to 24 uh, for the CQ level. For your keyframe interval, we're going to set that to two seconds. Preset, have this set to slowest or best quality. And again, if you're getting some encoding errors or rendering issues, you can drop this a little bit lower to better quality or even good quality or medium quality. Really depends on what you're recording. For a video like this that I'm recording a tutorial, I really don't need it set to slowest. Um, I could get away with putting it on like P4 medium quality um, and it would look almost exactly the same because there's not much movement going on in this video. As for tuning, you're going to set this to high quality, multi-pass mode, two passes on full resolution. Again, if you're getting any errors in coding or rendering, 
uh, you want to set this down to maybe quarter resolution or single pass. However, I suggest always trying the high end first, right? Always try going with full resolution um, and then dropping things down if you're getting issues. For profile, we want to set this to high. Look ahead, we're going to have this unchecked and psycho visual tuning, we want this checked. For GPU, set this to zero and max B frames are going to be set to two. Under audio, this is where you're going to, you know, finagle with the audio uh, for your recording. If you're recording with just a gaming headset on and a gaming microphone, you're going to select under desktop audio, the gaming headphones, and then the microphone, you're going to select the gaming headset microphone. If you have a standalone microphone, um, you're going to select that here. Whatever you're listening to the audio from, like let's say you're recording gameplay, that's what you're going to want to select under desktop audio device. And then obviously under mic or auxiliary audio, that is where you're going to select your microphone. Anything else down here, you really don't need to worry about in terms of audio. We're gonna move on over to the video tab and here's where we can change up some things even more. So now let me give you a scenario. Let's say your gaming or you know your, your display or your tutorial, whatever you're recording is in 2K or 4K resolution. That is the resolution you're gonna input here in the base canvas resolution. Your base canvas resolution is going to be what you are gaming at or what you are looking at. You can output that scaled resolution to something else. You can, let's say, be gaming or, or working in 2 or 4K, but you want your recording to be 1080p or 720p. That is what you would input here for output scaled resolution. I'm recording and gaming and doing all this stuff in 1080p, so I have no uh, scaling going on in any of my recordings. But if you are using a 2K or 4K monitor, I suggest, you know, downscaling that to maybe 1080p, especially if you're recording videos for YouTube or even lower to 720 in certain instances. And then when you do do some scaling to your recordings, you're gonna have the option to use a downscale filter um, and you're gonna wanna use Lanxos for this filter. I cannot select one right now because I am not downscaling anything. And then common FPS values, this is going to be the FPS value of your recording. You wanna record in 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second or some other weird number, you can input that right here. Next, we have the hotkeys section on the left-hand side. Again, none of this affects the quality of your recording. I'm trying to keep this really, really quick and concise for you guys. Uh, but in here, you can pretty much bind any hotkeys you want within OBS to any keys on your keyboard or macro device, whatever you have. Um, under accessibility, nothing here that we need to worry about. And then under advanced, there is a couple things I do want to talk about here. So for process priority, you want to make sure this is set to normal. If you set this to high, what's going to happen is your computer is going to allocate more resources to OBS instead of whatever it is you're doing, whether you're gaming or working on a program or whatever, you may experience some lag in that game or program if you set this to anything higher than normal. Under video in here, we want to set this to direct direct 3D 11, color format NV12, color space rec 709, color range, set this to limited. If you set this to full, your videos are going to be extremely dark. Trust me on that. SDR white level 300 nits and HDR nominal peak level set to 1000 nits. Under the recording section here, this is very important, guys. Pay attention. You can automatically write remux to MP4. If you record as an MKV file, if you record as an MKV file, have this button checked and then at the end of your recording, it will automatically change it to an MP4 for you. So you want to record as an MKV and then check this box so that it automatically turns it into an MP4 for you. And that will help with all of those issues. You will be able to crash or completely lose power in the middle of a recording and that recording will be saved. So that's super, super important. All right, guys. So there you have it. Those are the best possible recording settings. I hope that your recordings come out nice and crispy and HD just like mine. I think you guys are really going to benefit from this video. And if you did, head on over to my Twitch and follow me at twitch.tv slash hammerdance. I stream Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern time every single week. And subscribe to the channel. Turn on those post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And I just want to say thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I want you to keep those hammers up and I'll see you next time.